Hi there, welcome to part two of our stylish opening day right here in Times Square, the crossroads of the world, the intersection of style, of entertainment, and of unreasonably large amounts of neon. I'm Josh Zepps. And I'm Rachel Zalis. We have got the most fashionable happy hour anywhere on this episode of the Style Series. Hi there. In just a few moments, we're going to meet one of America's greatest fashion designers right here on our stage. It's none other than the fun, the fabulous, the fun-tabulous. Is that a word, fun-tabulous? I'm not sure. <laughs> we can make it one. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Cynthia Rowley is here. You I like always Cynthia? felt amazing in her clothes. I love her. Good. Me too. But it's already been quite a day for us here at the Style Studio. What do you reckon? You've had a good time today? I still have chills from Robin Thicke's performance. You loved Robin Thicke, <laughs> didn't you? I do. Okay, I, I agree. But before we move on, let's take a little walk down memory lane, a little reminiscence. Take a look back at the day's events so far. Times Square was a buzz as usual this morning. The singer-songwriter Robin Thicke braved the bustle, arriving at our studio raring to go. Sure enough, the dapper R&B star lit up our giant screen for the very first time with a performance of some of the latest hits from his new album, Something Else. We followed that star turn with another stylish musical sensation, Rihanna. The soulful songbird gave us an exclusive look at her new career as a fashion designer. Well, I've always loved fashion, and now I get to have a very special relationship with Gucci, the brand. And then we close out the show with more of Robin Thicke's musical magic. So yeah, it's been a big old day here. We had entertainment, we had fashion, and that's really what this show is all about. Absolutely, right? and no one exemplifies that more than our next guest star, fashion designer Cynthia Rowley. That's right, Cynthia will be with us in just a moment. In the meantime, take a look at this. Earlier this afternoon, Cynthia Rowley arrived at the Style Series studio in Times Square. It was a relatively short commute for a New York-based fashion designer who is constantly on the go. On Bleecker Street in Manhattan's Greenwich Village, this modest boutique is the flagship of the global brand known as Cynthia Rowley. Her collection includes women's wear, shoes, accessories and a whole lot more. Product lines that are in demand from the Big Apple to Beijing and beyond. But as you can see during her star-studded standing room only runway shows, Rowley's passion is fashion. In this world, Rowley blazed her own trail to success. It all started when the Illinois native was just a girl. She made this her very first dress at the tender age of seven. Rowley eventually designed and sold her first collection before she'd even graduated from college. And ever since then, she's honed her singular earning a wide following in retail and on red carpets, building what she calls a lifestyle brand. Hollywood loves her style, and the pop culture appeal of her quirky cool is so of the moment that a bicycle designed by Rowley recently rolled from the runway onto the hit TV show Gossip Girl. She's not just an award-winning designer, but a published author too. She's a self-avowed adventurer and a proud mother of two daughters. Today, we get a rare look at an American fashion icon. Here's Cynthia Rowley getting ready for her close-up, ready to open up about her life and her journey, her art and her own unique style. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Rachel with the one and only Cynthia Rowley. Rachel. I mean, it is crazy. I, I feel like the Calvin Klein underwear models or something with giant billboards, you know? Yeah, it's no, it's crazy. very exciting. I'm a little scared. <laughs> no, we're going to be easy on you, I promise. <laughs> no, but I love watching your tape. You made your first dress at seven years old. I mean, I would actually wear that dress right now. It was so cute. It's actually kind of cute. Maybe it should make a little return engagement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I grew up in a really small town where there wasn't a lot to do and um, started out 
laying fabric on the floor, tracing around myself like a crime scene victim and cutting it out and sewing it up. And, um, you know, it was really just a way to be creative and stay out of trouble. Now, what I, was, what I find really impressive about you in reading through your stuff is that already in college you sold your first collection and you know a lot of young women come to me and say how did you get started and I say in college you know I did an internship I started at Cosmo and I think that's something really important was that important for you to start so young yeah I think I mean I think internships are really great and really important for people to do because you really do get a look in you know you get to see what it what it's really like and you can decide not only are they thinking about are you good but you're thinking about is this what I want to do but I was kind of of the uh, fake it till you make it um, <laughs> philosophy in college I and like that <laughs> sort of had a chance meeting with a with a buyer that um, you know really she really gave me my start and um, you know it's kind of a famous story I went to her office and showed her some things that I had made and she said, oh, that's cute. What's the style number on that? And I was like, one, you know, what's the style number on that? Right. Two, you know, so I really <laughs> was kind of faking it and, uh, you know, and then sort of got the hang of things, I guess, all these years later. Right. Well, that's amazing. I mean, I guess it shows if you have a dream and you're passionate about it, at any age, you can make something happen. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think it is, um, you know, some, uh, it, it, as in any creative field, I think that it, it's something that you have to be 100% committed to, to doing and just never, never, ever give up. Well, considering how huge your brand is now, I mean, you're global all over Asia, you know, opening stores all across the world. That must be an incredible feeling. Tell me about sort of broadening the brand. Um, well, it's pretty exciting. I, I, I used to say I, I'm sort of like the... Um, like the David Hasselhoff of Japan because um, <laughs> I'm really You're huge in Japan. Japan, big in Japan. But um, it's um, you know it's re it's really gratifying because it's you know when you're a little kid and you're, or even when you know I was starting out to think that I would I would be so thankful for you know any opportunity that came my way and and so grateful if somebody would take a chance on me and so to be able to have people you know all over the world enjoying the clothes it's really you know i mean that that is really like a dream right i can see you're until even today <laughs> until the, oh, i love until you're like today. cheering I, I see how how important it really is to you yeah it's, which really, is really, it's nice. really gratifying Was and there... it's exciting to you know visit other cultures and you know and try to you know i think it's it's really inspiring too to visit to visit other places. Well, speaking of inspiration, where do you get most of your inspiration from? Is it traveling? Is it people? Is it, you know, what is it that really inspires your work and you as a person? That's a, that's a, I have to say that's like the number one question that people ask and it's so personal. You know, it's really, it's really, um, it's a really hard thing to, to actually talk about because it is, I, I feel like every day is sort of like this Mon movie montage scene where you know there's so so many images and so many um, st stimulating uh, visuals you know that and and you just don't know if you know sometimes I see something and then it pops back into my mind you know like a month later or two months later so I think it's really um, you know I try to see as much as I can see and do as much as I can do and whether it's uh, you know in the art world or music or whatever you know history I, I just try to be as um, constantly um, exploring new things you know as much as pos possible right one of the things we're really seeing in sort of pop culture now is how important the celebrity aspect has come into designers and fashion what does that meant to you I mean you have so many celebrities, amazing people, Eva Longoria and Julia Stiles, Hayden Panettiere. I mean, so many different great young actresses wearing your work. It, I mean, it's really exciting because I think that, you know, it's not so much like, um, you know, that they have to be a movie star or something. You know, it's really just to have somebody that is smart and interesting and creative wearing the clothes because I think that that actually adds so much more to what, you know what it is you know what the clothes what the clothes are so you know I, I try to dress uh, actresses and musicians and even artists you know a lot of contemporary artists too right. and really just creative cool people
Yeah. No, it's great. I think that's been a big boost, too, for the fashion industry to have so many young actresses aligned with designers. Well, there's designers. so much media, too, now. I mean, here we are, like, in the most gigantic media media um, place of all, but I think that um, there are so many outlets now where, you know, you can see um, celebrities or, you know, people wearing the clothes. So um, it's exciting when you do dress someone that it really gets out there in, you know, in a really right. major way. Well, even more exciting than dressing celebrities for red carpet. I love on your bio, it says you like death-defying adventure sports, <laughs> <laughs> like surfing in scuba. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit daring. I mean, I guess, you know, maybe that goes with the territory that you have to be a little daring in your personal life. And yeah. I'm not very good at relaxing. I've never been like the, you know, like s sit down on the couch with a good book kind of girl. So, um... Yeah, I'll pretty much try it. Try it. And anything. trampolining? I think you have a trampoline in your oh, house. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> but, um, bungee jumping and yeah, all kinds of things. Not on a regular basis, but yeah. Well, I like sports. Equally adventurous is that you're actually a mother of two girls. Right. Which people told me, you know, when you have kids, you're not going to want to ride a motorcycle anymore. And I don't know what happened, but um, still, still doing all that stuff. But my girls are my my. Um, I have two little girls that um, are very inspiring and fun. Oh, very fun. They're great. here. Are they? Think, Should we yeah. wave to them? <laughs> Hi, girls. Kit and Gigi. How do you actually balance that? I mean, you must be so busy as a designer. You know, you have your action adventure. You're a mom. What is it that? What is it that keeps My you action balanced? adventure, that's yeah. so fun. Like, I should have an action figure or something. That would be great, right? Yeah, yeah, like maybe the that's my next angel. thing. <laughs> I need an action figure. Um, well, I, do, I think, you know, you do need to balance. Like, everybody needs to balance. It's, it's hard to be, um, you know, I work like a million hours a day. And, um, you know, I have a family. And, and then I, I think I, I'm really good at, like, just, you know, separating um, my work from fun. And then integrate. I like to, I try to integrate my kids into my work life so that, you know, they are around creative people a lot and, and um, you know, sort of see that it takes, that hard work pays off and that it, you have to work hard to get, you know, to be, you know, be able to do what you want to do. And, right. Well, um, that's, that's great. Your daughters are very fortunate to have a mom like you. And now, the, nothing says family like the holidays. Right. Yes. And so I would love to take a look. We have a few models actually showcasing some of your looks. First up, we have Jana. Yeah. So this is a, um, ooh, I love this. That looks so <laughs> cute. On, th this is um, all what we, we call tarnish sequins. And I think now it's like, it's kind of a thing now that people don't want to look like I have a whole brand new expensive outfit right. on, you know? And so um, this is a way that it sort of plays down um, something that's that is very sparkly for the holidays, and um, and and then the whole idea of uh, sort of investment dressing, I right. think, is especially now important. So I I think about things like this. Not only am I going to wear it now, but I I have started to think like I'll save it, and my girls will wear it too. Oh. You know, because nothing that's better than than stuff from your mom's my closet. My favorite <laughs> things are things that my grandmother gave, has given yeah. me and you know so I think that it's a it's a, a fun thing to think about now when you're buying things that you know it'll have a long life right. and be passed down. What I love so. about this dress is you know sequins are so fun mm -hmm. for the holiday but these are sort of smaller sequins so you still get that shine and sparkle without being too overwhelming. Yeah, and it's you, not gold or silver or black. You know, it's just, it's something, I think, a little bit more sophisticated. And um, if the dress is seemingly too sophisticated, you can, um, uh, she's wearing a gold-plated bubble blower <laughs> necklace. So it makes it a little bit That's fun. always good to mix it up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now we'll take a look at our next model, Chloe. Now, purple rained yeah it, on the runway yeah totally <laughs> it's such all these all these kind of berry colors are so important for holiday like i think they're i think they're really flattering 
and I think they're really festive and yet still sort of understated and a great alternative to black. Right. And so um, this is um, just a little silk dress that I, I feel like it's basic enough that you can wear it a lot of different ways, but it's still really special with the sleeves and um, she's pairing it with the um, Lucite necklace, which I love that. I think, like, right now, also, accessories are so important. It's really like something that you can change your whole look right. with a great, kind of important piece, you know? So, yeah. whether it's a necklace. Because yeah, that would look good with like jeans and a t shirt. Totally. So, you can wear it both formal and casual. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. Our next model is Sharon. Let's take a look. Ooh, I love this. It's so now deconstructed this is, and yeah, cool. Yeah, this is a little bit less um, <laughs> understated, I guess I would say. These are all um, laser silhouetted animals, so, so like little cutout animals on um, this halter dress. So this is a really, really special piece, and some things, you know, something that'll make a great entrance, you know, to a party, yet it's still... Yeah. It's definitely very artistic. That's a I showstopper. Think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I love it with the leather jacket because it makes it kind of tough, you know. I love that mix, you know, the crop leather jacket with like a flirty kind of dress. I love that masculine feminine. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine how long it takes to make each one of those cutouts. Oh my God, those are crazy. <laughs> those are crazy. But if you look closely, it's fun because if you look closely, you really see like all the animals, you know, you can see like a lion and a giraffe and an elephant and yeah. so. That was a very, that was a... Was that inspired by a partic particular trip for a look? Um, there's an artist that I love, named Kara Walker, who does silhouettes, and I have been a big fan of her art for a long time, and so this is kind of a, um, I guess, the, the, the wearable version of right. Well, she it's does. absolutely beautiful, and I love you, let you bring other art into your own art form. Thank you so much. Now, I want to get back to describing some of your, your collections and your fabulous clothes. Reviews have used words like sophisticated, pretty, youthful. Is that sort of evocative of how you feel? Yeah, I think. <laughs> I mean, that, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I think vibrant nice. and alive when I think of your clothes. Oh, nice. I Thank absolutely you. adore them. Um, yeah, I guess, it, you know, it's hard to, it's always hard to describe things like that, to describe clothes in words, because it is really something that, you just feel it, you know, when you put it on, you just feel it. So it's hard, it's hard right. to describe. Well, those are all good things. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> well, you absolutely have your finger on the pulse of what's happening. You sent down bicycles on one of your runways and like that, it was on Gossip Girl. One I know, of my it's favorite crazy. shows. I was like, ooh. <laughs> Tell me how that happened. Well, I was thinking about, uh, you know, thinking about our culture and what's happening and, you know, always, always trying to, um, add a little zing into what, you know, what, what people are thinking about. So um, I think it is important to start thinking of riding bikes and, and rather than always just, you know, lift, putting your arm up for a taxi. Yeah. And um, so... Good for the I, environment, too. Yeah, and so <laughs> I wanted them to look special, so I did little prints on the bikes. And, um, and then at the end of the spring show, um, all the models rode out on bikes, which is a little almost a little YouTube moment with yeah. people, the models almost riding into the front row. And, but, um, but having it be on Gossip Girl was awesome. Yeah, I, mean, I love that. Amazing. I saw that in, in the scene. I was like, oh, that's such a great looking bike. Nice. <laughs> I noticed that more than the actors on that scene. So it was a good thing. Yeah, it's good. We're doing, we have more, we have, we're doing a, a new series of them and we're adding a um, bicycle built for three which is for the young family that um, it's bicycle built for two with a baby seat. In oh, the back. that's so cute. How important is it to you to have pop culture influence your work? I mean, I think that that's, you know, where else, uh, where else does it come from? You have to be in touch with, you know, who you're creating for. And um, I just think, I think music and, and art again, you know, like all those things that I think that that's, you know, that's the heart of it. That's where it's all coming from. Yeah. What, do you, what does fashion mean to you? You know, can anyone have fashion and style? Is that something we can all attain? Ooh, that's a hard question. I, 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 I have to say, I think fashion is like a sense of humor. Like, you kind of, you either have it or you don't. Right. I'm not saying that you can't try, 
but <laughs> you know it is something that's sort of innate like you know throw this on and it just looks amazing on some people and then you know sometimes you know it's not so easy so I, I think um, I think it's important to always experiment and always try new things and don't get stuck in a rut and you know really um, try try to evolve your your style the same as you would in any other part of your right. life you're not going to live in the same room and your you know have the rooms look the same and you know everything should always be changing as much as possible right. well you actually like live. our new president oh, right. <laughs> change change is good well you definitely live by what you say i mean you do all those action adventure sports you know you do constantly evolve and i think that's reflective in your clothes as well yeah, I always, I don't know why, I mean, it would be so easy to just say this is my style and stick to it and keep doing the same thing, you know, sort of new um, iterations of the same thing over and over, but I don't know, I just, I, it's, it's, it becomes like a really, uh, you know, stressful process to create a new collection every season just because it really is like reinventing the wheel every time, so, but it's, it's the only way I can stay um, excited and, 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 you know, um, interested in what I'm doing, and I hope that's what keeps other people excited. Well, yeah, well, one reviewer was very excited about your Spring 09 collection. I have to read you this quote. It says, just when you expect to see some pretty girly fluffiness, she answers with looks so futuristic they could have been hanging in Judy Jetson's closet. The mood was rough and tough, and we loved it. Jetson's one of my favorite toes. Nice. <laughs> I guess that's, futuristic is good because you know if you buy it now, you, it'll be around for a long time. Maybe good way to something. look at it. <laughs> so futuristic important. is probably always good. And uh, rough and tumble, I like that too. That's cool. Do you feel like that's reflective of where you're going in, in your next phases, designing your collections? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think, I think that's, that seems like, um, you know, I think a little bit of the zeitgeist now, you know, what people are thinking that, um, you know, it's not too fluffy and pretty and prissy and, you know, it really is like a little bit tougher and, and you know, maybe a little bit more utilitarian or something. Right. Well, that's great. Well, we're lucky enough to have a few looks from your spring collection here that we have the models coming out. The first one is Sharon. You can tell me a little bit about this look. See, this, this, I think this does look a little bit futuristic now that I'm seeing yeah. it like this. <laughs> I think for spring, I mean, um, th very graphic things like black and white. I mean, the shoes are very graphic and the jacket is very graphic. And um, it's really just the jacket is, is something that's really special and new looking. And, but the dress underneath, the black um, duchess satin dress, I think is something that you can have forever and, you know, is really sort of like an investment. Yeah, well, investment I, black piece. and white to me is always such an amazing color combination. Like, I think you will always look perfect if you put those two together. What I love about your clothes, too, is it's just the detailing. You know, you take something that could be just a black dress and you put this incredible beading in kind of interesting way. So I really love that look. It looks so cute. It's very short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a top to like some might be I a like dress short, for so another. I, think that, I like that, but you know. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Chloe. Ah, oh, this is incredible, sort of the kimono inspired. Yeah, this is this is pretty, I, I, I think it's really sexy, but it's also, um, you know, something that's kind of like basic black and you can wear all the pieces, you know, in different ways. And um, and she's wearing her same necklace that she had on before now on on this look. So it's something that you see you can wear a lot of different ways. And, yeah. um, and uh, I think a lot of women feel, you know, if I want to look sexy, I have to wear a mini skirt or a dress. And yeah, I think this, this is, is covered up. Yeah. Covered up. Covered up, classy, but such a great look. And you can wear it in a lot of different ways. The pants you can totally wear with a t-shirt and, you know. That's great. Your whatever. clothes are versatile, which is very important in today's economy. You can totally wear, the, you can wear that little wrappy top thing over a bikini if you want Okay, to. great. Thank you. And finally, we have Jana. This is such an incredible print. I love we this. Do, uh, we do all our own prints and, you know, we, we create and make all the fabrics. So, um, this was, this is a new 
print that again is kind of graphic, but um, and it's a bit really like great shirt dress that you know looks really special. I think because because of the print and she has it accessorized again with um, you know really important piece of jewelry that can be worn a lot of different ways and some shades for um, the cool shades. Yeah, the cool Everyone's shades. gonna have those for spring. Um, it's like very futuristic. Yeah. <laughs> what I love is that you did the floral too, but in a very delicate way, which is very exciting right now too, very current. Thank you so much. I love those looks. Are now can can we get these? Are they available right now? These looks? Yeah, I think um, some are coming in. The first three that we we saw are all available now, and um, most of the other stuff is coming in in the next month or so. So okay, great. check our website or. But you're not, you're not done with your work yet. I mean, never, people don't realize the second you're done with one collection, you have a whole new one oh coming up. Oh, my God. It's so... February. I was at work till 9 <laughs> o'clock last night. Like, it is never... It's never ending. Like, you literally have one day to relax, and then you start on the next thing. And, like, the day after the show is kind of like... You're just, like, crashed. Like, the day after Christmas, all your toys have been played with, you know, and you're just like, oh, now what do we do? And then you realize you have to start the next one, so. There's no yeah. break. Well, it's I really appreciate it, considering business. how busy you are, that you took the time to come and sit oh, with it's us. it's amazing. And chat. Amazing. Everyone, please applaud Cynthia Rowley. Thanks, <laughs> Rachel, and thanks, Cynthia. It's a fascinating conversation. That pretty much wraps up our live premiere but this show is the holiday gift that just keeps on giving. Because starting next week, we're going to be posting style series web episodes, or as we like to call them, webisodes, featuring highlights from today's show. Plus, we'll have a whole lot more coming up next month when more stylish stars visit us right here at the crossroads of the world, the intersection of fashion and entertainment. So stay tuned for details about our next live performance on the Style Series. We will see you then. Take care. Yay!